first video of 2022. I hope you all guys doing fantastic. In this video, we're gonna talk about Fujifilm's Q button menu. The reason why I like to use Fujifilm is of their ergonomics in a way of that you got your shutter speed, you got your ISO and you got your aperture all available on your fingertips. Easy to change settings on a fly, change your ISO, change your shutter speed or even your aperture. However, one of the good nice things within a Fujifilm system is actually the Q button. The Q button allows you to change up to 16 different settings in one window and today I'm going to show you how to set it up, how to use it and how to make the most out of your camera. Guys, welcome back. Every single new subscriber, I'm Florian. Good to have you here on the channel. And if you're new to the channel or you're a returning viewer, you might want to think about hitting a subscribe button. We talk a lot about photography, videography, settings, tips, tricks, and everything else what belongs to it. So if this is of interest to you, hit the subscribe button, like, comment, let me know what you think. And without further saying, let's dive into the menu. So before we're starting off, we might want to quickly locate our Q button. With the Fujifilm X-T4, it's just here in the right hand side corner, just under the dial of the exposure compensation. With the Fujifilm X-T3 as an example, you got your dial back down here, just above your joystick. So, how to set the Q button menu up? It's very simple, easy, straightforward. We're jumping into the menu and coming down to our setup menu. We're jumping over to button dial setup and then with the Fujifilm X-T4, you got your two options already. Edit, save, quick menu for photo and edit, save, quick menu for video. With older cameras, such as like a X-T3, you will just see one window. However, with the Fujifilm X-T4, with the newer model, you got two windows, one for photo, one for video, because you got a switch dial for movie and picture mode as well. So you got two different quick menu setups which is definitely fantastic because you can program both settings or both quick menus to your specific needs. Let's jump into the photo version quickly. When we're jumping into the photo version, you can choose how many slots or how many options of different settings you would like to have, such as like 16, 12, eight, and four. When we're coming quickly back down, or back out, jumping quick in our quick menu, you can see I programmed my window to 16 slots. If you would say you would choose eight or four, you would see less options in your quick menu. So let's jump quickly back into the setup menu, come over to button dial settings and choose how many slots you want. In our case, we're choosing 16 as an example. And then you come into your quick menu and you got 16 different windows on your screen and now you could program every single one to a different function. As an example, program your autofocus mode, your dynamic range, your white balance, film simulation, image quality, etc, etc, etc. So you got a lot of different options to program every single window to a task you would like to have. Let's go over to film simulation. Let's change this as an example. You go to the film simulation, you press menu OK, and then you can go through four pages of settings you could program this window to. Let's say we wanted to change the film simulation to grain effect. We go one down, we select the grain effect, press menu OK, and then your window is the grain window. So coming out of the menu, you just hit the shutter button, press your Q menu, and then I need to make sure that I'm actually in photo mode. Press Q menu, and then you come over and you see your grain effect. As mentioned already, you've got plenty of different options. If we're jumping back into the menu, button dial settings, edit save, quick menu, 16 slots, come over to grain, press menu, OK. You could change it to color chrome effect, color chrome FX blue, dynamic range, and, and, and. So basically you got plenty of options to change it to. Let's change it quickly back to film simulation that my Q menu is back up to date. As an example, for now, ignore the base C1 for now. 
My quick menu is based off autofocus mode, dynamic range, white balance, film simulation, then the image quality that I can change between JPEG and RAW. I got the image size, I got sharpness, I got highlight tones, shadow tones, color tones, sharpness. Then of course my LCD brightness, my flush function settings, face and eye detection and a self timer. So very simple, straightforward. All those settings are just for my personal photography use. I also got C2 programmed, which is basically a Kodak Portra 400 film simulation. And I got a different video to this, which I can link down in the comments. You can check it out, how to set up certain film simulations within your Fujifilm camera. However, you could program also several different film simulation into your custom settings as well. And you got seven of them, so you got plenty of space to customize those settings to your needs. But on average, I have it very basic. I got the main basic functions I need for photography. Let's jump quickly into the video mode. For this, we need to make sure that we change to video mode as well. So if we press a Q button, we actually see our settings for video instead of photo. The nice thing is if you swap between still and movie mode, your Q menu will change and will only show you the selected programs or options you programmed your Q button menu to it. Very handy, very easy, so you can change a lot of settings between photo and video and it will save your changes. So let's say you would be taking pictures and you want to do a quick video, you jump to video, let's say you wanted to change it to slow motion and if you got the window set to slow motion or full high speed recording, you can change it to let's say five times 120 frames per second by 24 frames per second and you basically select your full high speed recording. You press the shutter button and here we go, full high speed recording, five times 120 frames per second and your shutter speed is set to 120 frames per second. Keeping in mind you need to adjust your shutter speed that you keep the rules of third, so you need to dial in your correct shutter speed for your frame rate. Now we dialed in 240 frames per second. You could do a quick video and then basically when you're done, you press the Q button, you change it back or you set your full high speed recording back to off, you press your shutter button. You need to adjust your shutter speed again, so keep this in mind when you jump between let's say 24 frames per second and full high speed recording, always make sure that your shutter speed is adjusted. So in this case, we switch the high speed recording off. Now we need to adjust our shutter speed again to 48th of a second or even 50th of a second. And now basically you're ready, good to go and you film in 24 frames per second again. So let's jump quickly into the menu and coming over to button dial settings again, edit save quick menu for video. And again, same thing, same process. We got 16 slots, 12 slots, eight slots or four slots. In my case, I chosen 16 slots to get the most out of a quick menu. And then going quickly through, I got a movie optimized silent control. I got a movie mode resolution. I got my white balance, Kelvin my movie mode frame rates, ISO movie controlled, film simulation, face eye detection, movie bit rate, etc, etc, etc. Let's say you would like to change one of the settings. You just go over to this window, you press menu OK, and then you can choose again out of four pages worth of settings you would like to program to this window. In my case, I leave it with the internal, external mic level adjustments because if I got the mic plugged in and let's say my sound is too high or my audio is clipping, I would just need to press the Q button and then come over to the audio window when, when a microphone is plugged in and then I just can twist it and say, I want to turn down the decibels to minus six and my decibels are set down. I press the shutter button and I'm ready to go, ready to use. My mic is adjusted and it's very simple, easy with 
a few clicks you got 16 different settings available so you don't need to think about okay which button was this one again I programmed to or what is this button again you got a lot of possibilities with the Q menu and it speeds up your workflow dramatically and it made my life way way easier as well I found the Q button menu very very helpful Right now, if you do, let's say, video and photography at the same time, you've got two different quick button menus. One is for video, one is for photography. 16 different settings within a queue menu. You've got loads of different buttons you can customize your camera to. So you've got a bunch of options how to customize your camera and to make your live workflow very easy. You can program several film simulation to your custom recipes or to your custom profiles, C1, C2. You've got seven of them available. So technically you could have seven different film simulation recipes programmed to it if you shoot a lot of JPEG or you shoot a lot of film simulation. And as mentioned, I got a different video about this as well. And I'm gonna link it down in the comments so you can check it out. So the Q button menu is definitely very handy, very easy to use and I found very helpful as well. And it did speed up my work process, my workflow in many ways. Right now I use it a lot for video, less for photography actually, more for video, because when I wanna shoot some slow motion in between, I don't need to dig through the menu, find a full high speed recording setup or settings, change it and jump out again. I just press a button, the Q button, jump over to the full high speed recording dial a frame rate in I would like to use, press the shutter button and I'm good to go. Adjust my shutter speed. My shutter speed needs to be adjusted no matter what if I dive into the menu or use a quick button menu. So in this case, I found it just easier because I got all my favorite settings in one window instead of going through the menu itself, digging through pages worth of settings. So with that said guys, I hope you give it a try, try it out, the Q button, set it up how you need it, customize all your buttons and you will see you got a bunch of options and countless options of setting up your camera. And with that said guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, hit the thumbs up button, like, comment and subscribe and I'm gonna see you my friend very soon in another video. Cheers guys. Mm -hmm.